on your behavior, it's on your heart, it's on your DNA. Like, how do you, how do you deal with all that? I, I did another companion film called Paper Tigers uh, that came out before Resilience that's also had an extraordinary run, um, a little bit more focused in the educational field. One of the trauma-informed educators in the film uh, is, is with us tonight. Eric, could you come up here? Has anyone seen Paper Tigers? Anyone here? One. That's not bad. Um, so we have, a, we have a clip, and I'm going to oh, set yeah, it up, way. which is that... Uh, what Lincoln High School in Walla Walla, Washington, was one of the first high schools to really, from a top-down uh, approach, bring sort of that, this trauma-informed awareness from the top on down to the staff. And they had some key things. They have a health center that the kids have easy access to that's had a profound effect on their wellness. Um, but by and large, it's really the people and the teachers and how they, how they interact with the kids that ultimately make the difference. And this is what the film was about. What does it mean to be a, the trauma -informed, in a trauma-informed educational environment for at-risk youth? So there's a lot of, um, I'm, I'm going to show you a two-minute clip we cut out of a conversation Eric had with his uh, colleague, Jeannie Huntsman, who's also a teacher there, about really what it means to be um, working with kids in a trauma-informed way. So can we show that clip right now? You know, if I could wave my wand and just <laughs> dink, uh, change the way people view is the idea that we're all just um, uh, behavioral detectives and, and we're all really we're just looking for the source. Why is this behavior the way it is? The chromosomes, the DNA. You know, and, and in order to find that source of the behavior, you have to get to know the kid. Right. The slang term we use for it is the AC and a kid, but, but I, think, I think we both have a fairly similar way that we approach a kid when we meet them for the very first time. Hey, where are you from? Why are you here? You know, yeah, how'd, you, how'd you end up at our school? And uh, yeah, what other schools have you been to? Do you live with your parents? Yeah. Oh, so you, you only have one parent? Yeah. Like, uh, where's the other parent at? Yeah. Trevor was part of that? All of a sudden, they're just like, man, I'm having this real conversation. This person actually cares. And that's where that real connection happens. No. Uh -huh. Monday morning, every class. The entry task is, how are you? How was your weekend? Give me a high and a low. I'll get a paragraph where they launch into like, my uh, dad went back to jail last night and I don't know where I'm gonna sleep tonight. So you know, so you start out reducing that stress for them right away because they've shared out, they feel better about that. Opens up a dialogue that I can quietly visit with them again. Are you okay? Do I need to connect you to something? We start to think about small things that make a huge difference. What would happen if every kid showed up and felt loved within a couple of days and they always had someone to talk to? You know, like the kids at our school that are so disenchanted with their previous school experience, they're not disenchanted because they had too much homework at the other school, is always a relationship experience that they've had. Always. That's fixable. That's fixable at every single school. Right, because those kids are everywhere. This thing about ACEs and trauma informed. To see it start where it was <laughs> and to watch it catch on and, and grow is has just been awesome to watch. Let me let me let me pose a few things and then you can respond. I don't know about this whole trauma informed thing. I mean, you know, I mean we I've got my own kids. I, I've got, I've got, work, I've got, you know, I work on the weekends, I do other things, I come to school. It's like, you're asking me to put my heart out there when I've got all these other things that are also important in my life. There's no way. I can't do it. It's too much. I, I just, you know, I need to put down my wall and, like, if I'm going to survive and continue to work as an educator over the long term, you, you're asking too much of me. I'm not, I'm not sure what you're asking of me, actually. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I think I would actually take that and put it to you guys, because uh, first of all, I mean, I guess why would you want to know what I have to say? And so I guess what what I have to what to be able to give from my experience of going through this is being part of a community that has taken this information, and uh, they had like some. 
market downtown uh, a few months back and someone went through and did a straw poll and 60% of the people that were there had heard of ACEs. Um, and so I think, I think the piece that I would give you for everyone here, if this is your first time being exposed to this, um, I mean, really our goal is to break this cycle, right? Like that's the deal. We, how do we break this cycle? That's my goal as an educator. I walk in the classroom, um, you know, so, I mean, you don't know anything about me, and if you haven't seen about our school, the thing that's unique about our school is from the custodian to the principal, uh, lunch lady, parapros, and teachers, every single person in the building operates from the point of view of why is this behavior happening. It's from a trauma-informed view of the why. And um, I think a lot of people get caught up with the idea that trauma-informed is a thing that you do, but it's not. We all have the thing that we do. The thing we do might be parenting, uh, it might be law enforcement, it might be doctors. Trauma-informed is just the way we view, and, and you know, we've been talking a lot about kids, but I'm gonna take it one step forward and say it's not how we view kids, it's how we view people, right? Because you know, I might, I might be an unsavory character at 12, but I'm not gonna all of a sudden turn 25 and turn into a savory character behavior-wise, right? So it's that moment when you're in line uh, at the Mini Mart and the person across the counter melts down for whatever reason, and you might take that personally, well, this information, once you understand it, all of a sudden you're looking at that going, hey, I wonder what the deal is. What, what's going on for this person? And that empathy that was talked about earlier comes into play when we take the information we have now and we say, how do I apply this to everybody? How do I start viewing everyone around me differently? I'm still going to do the thing I do as a parent or as a teacher, but I'm going to view people through a different lens in the process of doing that. And some of the key important parts in our community that has made that difference has been key players that have reached out to bring together all the different fingers. You know, we're, I'm an educator, our school is just one of those fingers. Um, our law enforcement, it's great. Every now and then I'll hear some of the, um, the more traditional members in our community complaining that law enforcement doesn't just drop the hammer like they, like they used to. You know, and I just, I, I cheer inside um, because that's true, they're not. They, even our law enforcement are starting to view behaviors of not just kids, but of people in our community differently and say, what is the reason behind this behavior? I can tell you that as in, you know, our, for us, we're about six years into this now. Um, and I think we've got the, the pedal mashed on the gains that can become from just developing the relationship with the kids. Because once you, once you have that trauma view, then the kids feel understood. And then all of a sudden the relationships get really intense. And that's kind of the like, that's the, that's the crack that keeps me coming back to my job, you know, is that intense relationship that comes from that piece of it. Um, but, but the frustrating part now, six years in, is the realization that we can only see so many gains just through this trauma-informed view, right? Like, just interacting with people differently, there are huge gains to be had, but there's a limit to that because just that relationship alone isn't going to help start developing new skills. And that's where, uh, I wish I could remember her name, she was sitting right over here. The, the, the thing I love that she was talking about what was going on in schools is giving kids the skills they need to be able to start working on changing behaviors. But that skill piece that, that we need so bad that we're talking about with kids, you know, um, I just, uh, getting on the paper, getting on the plane uh, this morning was a kid on the, on the front page of our newspaper. He just got locked up for 24 years. Um, his dad was locked up. Those were con I had him in, in, in school for three years. Those were conversations that him and I had all the time about his dad being in prison and, and that impact that that had on him. He has three kids, you know, that he, that, he was, that he had before that cycle, right? So there's a piece of it that is, uh, you know, that first thousand days. That's a big thing that we're starting to do in our community right now is targeting the first thousand days of life. And so, you know, we're, we're, it just it has to go out everywhere. And I think everyone here can play a part in that, right? Whether or not it's getting that information out everywhere. I mean, it's the reason it feels so good and works so well is because it's just fact, you know? It's not another avid reading strategy that we get in schools. This is brain science. This is the reason our brains act the way that we do. And when we interact with other people based on that, you know, all of a sudden you don't need the science anymore because it, it feels right. You know it as soon as it happens that this, like I don't need any of the resilience movement anymore now at this point in my life because I see, I've, I've gone there and I've seen it and I've developed those relationships. And I know that a kid that values me this much doesn't act like this towards me unless there's something else going on. Like I don't need brain science to reinforce that at this point, so. There's a reason he, there's a reason he's in the movie. Um, I guess what I was trying to get at is, is I think we, we've had discussions in which, which we looked at, you know, what's being asked of teachers to be more engaged, more curious, 
and that that does take more but you have you've expressed it's like you know the pros and cons of of that versus if you shut it out it really increases the likelihood that you're walking around angry all the time yeah right. can you talk a little bit about that yeah absolutely you know um are there educators in here in the room like how many people here are doing in education so um for me, I know as soon as I haven't got to know a kid, I feel the frustration with their behavior started rising. You know, like I'll have a new kid transfer in, middle of the quarter, and uh, class will be going along, and all of a sudden this one kid just starts rising up on my frustration chart. And, uh, and all of a sudden it'll click, oh man, I haven't sat down yet. You know, I'm, I'm three days in, and, and three days for me is a long time without sitting down and getting to know this kid. Like, I don't know a story. And uh, as soon as I sit down, I have that conversation, slang for genie I call it as acing where we just have a real conversation and find out what's going on in this kid's life where the stress is possibly coming for this kid and as soon as that story triggers all of a sudden my own frustration as a teacher just goes away you know like that part I can let go of that of the why the behavior makes sense and the empathy comes out at that point you know where without that story that's where the power of story comes through you know without that story uh, the emotional piece can, can take over um, I Thank you. Thank you, Eric.